And good morning, everyone, and welcome to Women Who Rock With Success. This is your host, Ms. Diane Winbush, and today we have an interesting topic that we will be sharing with you and to help you to be able to build and brand your, uh, your audience. And so networking is something, as I was discussing with Isosa, that we don't talk about networking. We don't talk about it anymore. It's not important, but it is. That's how you get started with your brand and that's how your brand learns. So we're gonna go around the table, the, the panel, and we're gonna let every um, speaker um, introduce themselves to the audience. So um, Iosa, Isosa, I'm sorry, um, go ahead and you're first. Uh, thanks, Diane. So my name is Esosa Eke, and I'm the founder and creative director at Iconic Creative Group. Uh, we are a design firm that specializes in creating websites and brands for purpose-driven businesses and organizations. Um, I'm also a brand strategy consultant and confidence coach, and I specialize in empowering entrepreneurs to just make bolder business moves. Um, my love for creativity and people compelled me to become an expert in this field. And um, while working in corporate America, I actually saw purpose-led businesses and organizations being undervalued and overlooked. So I wanted to create a space where they could get the creative help they need um, and just help them show off their amazing talents. So basically my job is to make people feel seen, heard, and valued. <laughs> okay, absolutely, awesome. Uh, Diane? Hi everybody, Diane Helbig. Uh, I have an advisory and training firm, uh, Helbig Enterprises, <laughs> not exactly a creative name, <laughs> uh, but as an advisor and trainer, I serve small business owners and professionals uh, who want to realize better outcomes and be happier. So I advise mainly on the small business side with the owner and their leadership team, helping them strategize, problem solve, you know, do better things. And on the training side, I train people in all sizes of companies around leadership, sales, and customer service. Okay, okay. Uh, good morning, Jacqueline. Uh, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Good morning. My name is Jacqueline Strauss. Thank you so much for having me. I am the co-founder of a company called Second Vault, which is a digital storage solution for families to store their most important information. I am a CPA by profession. I'm also um, a mid-level executive, have served as a mentee to many, many people, um, specifically women. I also teach at the college level and have taught thousands of students over the last 17 years and have guided them uh, through their networks and um, decisions as far as the professional paths that they take after they move on from the college, their college level coursework. I'm also, most importantly, a mother. Uh, mm -hmm. And so uh, with that, we know that there is also a level of networking with the other parents in our community. <laughs> so um, that, that's a unique one, right? right. Far, far separate than professional networking, but definitely needed. Uh, right. And I also uh, value very much giving back to the community uh, and being an active participant in various community roles and sit on a number of boards. Oh, oh, that is so awesome. That's so sweet. She says, she said, I'm still networking too with your parent. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, let me let me calm down. I like that. Okay. <laughs> so we want to talk about uh first of all, we're gonna we're gonna go to ESOSA and we're gonna define what networking is. And so and then we're gonna move into some of the do's and don'ts. And then we're gonna also gonna talk about your individual um entity that you have that you can be able to bring to the platform as to what networking is. So we're gonna define what networking is first and then um, I want to share a little um, scenario with you when I first started business this is what I was going to be discussing with Isosa before um, Diane had chimed in and so when I first went I went this was a real huge professional and it was through um, the Business Network International and that's a huge large um, company that that consists of networking with businesses and what have you so they have different chapters in different states and in different countries I'm I'm being green I have on blue a blue shirt today, but I was green that day. I walk into the net to the networking and I sit down. 
okay and start to eating and so that's something that we don't do is we pull out our business cards first <laughs> see because i didn't know so we learn from each other so i we were supposed to pull out our business cards so on the second one then that's when i learned so there are a lot of do's and don'ts to networking and a lot of people don't understand that's the reason why we have the experts here today to be able to help us so we want to start with isosa and share with us a little bit about in your definition in your terms as to what networking really actually consists of. Absolutely. Um, I look at networking kind of like an engine. You can build a car, you can put in the pretty leather seats, you can even put the little dangly thing that smells good in your rear view mirror, in your rear view mirror. But if your car doesn't have an engine, you're not really going anywhere, right? Oh, yeah. So I believe that networking is basically the engine of business growth. Um, and in this case, your engine is the social atmosphere and the community that you engage with. Mm -hmm. um, because at the end of the day, some of these people that you socialize with and, and are these are people in your community, are people that will become your customers, your helpers, your referrals, or even like your ambassadors. So um, I think just like in a basic term, it's it's the process of interacting with others and exchanging information with these people who are going to be part um, of your engine, of your okay. engine. And, and that's going to basically accelerate, uh, for lack of a better word, but I like puns. Okay. <laughs> that's definitely going to be accelerating um, your business growth. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Diane, what's what with social media, you know, everyone is on social media. You have uh, uh, mid executive businesses, large companies, conglomerates that advertise on social media. So how effective is networking on social media? When we had the summit a couple of weeks ago, we had two summits and it was a social media summit and a social media marketing summit. And sometimes we can kind of confuse our customers. We're talking about the baby. We're talking about cleaning the diapers. And then here we come out with a business proposal where we got affirmations going on. We got things going on all over the place. And so that's what um, the those both of those um, panelists, they did. They went in and they kind of, you know, cleaned the way as to the importance of how we're supposed to market. So tell us about a little bit of in your terms, how important it is, how we network on social media. Uh, great question. Um, so I think social media is critical. In, in this day and age, it's only gonna get more so mm -hmm. for helping to build the community around your business. The key for me is to be genuinely interested in learning about the people who you are engaging with. It isn't about selling. Selling doesn't work on social media and it okay. shouldn't work on social media. So we need to stay away from that, right? What we really wanna do is learn as much as we can about who's out there right? right what what motivates them what's interesting for them what challenges are they dealing with all of the things that help us understand who we're talking to learn about them figure out who um works like we do who has the same values that we do the same work ethic different sorts mm -hmm. of things who we want to keep in our orbit and who we want to push out of our orbit uh, and, and continue to build those relationships because new business and good meaningful business comes from those relationships. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and so thank both of you all for your response. Jacqueline, in your terms, in networking, we're going to, and, and, and Diane is absolutely right. Don't expect sales to come from, from Facebook. I don't care how many uh, social campaigns that you, that you, uh, you know, sometimes it's the sales may not ever come. Sometimes individuals may pay people and then they look for the response or the return on investment. Sometimes the, the response is just, plain zero. So um, Jacqueline, the question is for you in regards to how important is word of mouth? You know, we have gotten away from some traditional ways of networking, uh, the mom and pop way of networking. So how important to you in your terms is word of mouth networking? So great question. At the end of the day, you're, we are as individuals, we are a brand, right? And we have That's to right. brand ourselves in a certain way and show up in a certain way. Okay. And depending on how we come across, whether, you know, 
we are people, somebody, and we present in a way that people want to embrace, that people, you know, are interested in learning to hear mm -hmm. from, learning more from, look to is really a thought leader, um, is the importance as far as that word of mouth, right? So if somebody has, the, the bottom line is, is people buy from people. Right. And that will never change. So, you know, right. regarding, in my opinion, as much technology, as much social media, you know, all of the above, people want to buy and interact with people. True. And so, you know, being mindful of your own personal brand, the way you show up, the way you clearly communicate what you stand for, what your company stands for is the way to make meaningful connections okay. and also ensure when it comes to networking that you're not considered a me monster. <laughs> it's not always, you know, it's not about me. It's how can I help you? That's right. right. Mm -hmm. And we're all busy. Mm -hmm. Everyone is busy and everybody can say, I'm too busy mm -hmm. to hear you out, meet with you, learn more about your company. But at the end of the day, I think it comes back to and down to is what's important to that person? Mm -hmm. Because when you understand and do your homework, on your target that you want to be part of your network and your ecosystem. When you figure out what's important to them and you align with that, then they're open to opening the door for you to mm -hmm. begin establishing a foundation and a relationship. Wow, that is that is astounding. You, you, you just took the hammer and just nailed it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so thank you. much for that. Wow. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna move and shift to the next question, um, and it's gonna be about some of the do's and don'ts. So we want each panelist to be able to share with uh, the uh, you know with the audience um, in regards to some of the do's and don'ts. So as I've already shared, kind of embarrassed. You know, when I first started, they had a big buffet table. I didn't know any better. No one gave me any instructions to networking. No one taught me anything. I just had the business license and I just ran with it. So I show up to this networking with powerful individuals and I show up eating the bacon and the eggs. I was just really really just 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 go digging into it and everybody else was just standing around and stuff talking to each other i'm like why am i the only one sit down and i had to get up and i had to be be polite and i had to get up and discard some things while i can be able to get back on target so we want to talk about some of those things uh, and then the next segment we're going to get into uh, because i know i think jacqueline is at work and we want to be sis, uh, sensitive to that as well so the next thing we want to get into after that we want to talk about our marketing materials and how important that is when we go out to uh, networking events but the first one we want to talk about is the do's and don'ts share some of the do's and don'ts that we should do and we should not be doing when we're at a networking event because it's important people don't talk about it anymore people want to sit behind the desk and think everything is going to come to them no you sometimes you have to go out and make a statement for your brand so we're going to start with isosa Isosa, yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay, Diane. We're okay. good there. <laughs> um, so I want to talk about dress because what you're wearing is number one, right? People look at you and they can size you up from the minute they see you. And humans were visual, right? Mm -hmm. So one thing I want to I want to say is how you dress is how you will be addressed, right? right. How you, what you wear is how people will respond to you. And I'm not saying you know fall into you know society standards of dressing but dressing in a way that proves that you are an expert in what you do is so so beneficial i think also it's important to um do your due diligence on the environments and activities that are taking place so you show up appropriately dressed right if you if it's a networking event that has to do with a beach cleanup um you're not going to show up in a suit and heels right <laughs> <laughs> so just be mindful and, and do your research, do your due diligence on what's going to be happening at these networking events, right? Sometimes we assume that networking events are just walking in and, and meeting and greeting people and, and shaking hands and someone's playing Twister in the corner, you know? Right. So definitely make sure you get the rundown. There's so many um, different ways you can do that by contacting the people who are, are listed on the event flyer, um, by sending them a short email just to ask like, what's going on? Because you always want to make sure that you show up on point. <laughs> 
Absolutely. And before we uh, 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 go to Diane, you know, here in Tennessee, they just passed a bill and I may be sounding a little harsh, but I'm sorry. They just passed a bill back here last year of allowing people to be able to on their dress code. So that's the reason why I'm bringing it out because of what you pointed out. So so about the hair, the hair can be natural hair. It can be colored and things like that. You don't need to be at works with green and gold. You don't need to be doing that. We have to st stay professional. That's just my opinion. We, I'm going to put a disclaimer before we release this 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 show. I'm going to put a disclaimer because everybody has opinions. That's just my opinion. I feel that if a person is a professional business owner, you do not need to be showing up at work or at, at, at anywhere with gold, red, purple. You got all types of rainbow colors and things like that in your hair. I think we need to maintain a one type of brand. You can wear your hair in different type of, of of styles but it needs to stay one particular color maybe like black and brown gold and brown or something like that how are you what type of message are we sending individuals i was so surprised that the governor signed that bill I, that was crazy okay come on diane it's ridiculous i gotta tell you i'm a little surprised that that's even a bill so no, I, I mean they have other things to worry about other yeah. than how people are dressing but that's that's my opinion, <laughs> that disclaimer in there. So, um, yeah, so, so I, I, I tend to agree with you. I will say okay. that I think people should be showing up for um, the industry that they are in. So okay. I know a woman who is a face painter and every time I would see her, she would have her face painted in some way. Okay, okay. Now, most people, she walks Fair in enough. the room, they don't know her, right? And they're going to look at her going, what in the world just happened? But boy, what a great advertisement for right? what she does. Okay. So, you know, I, I think we, a little bit of grace. Um, okay. Having said that, I definitely think there are things we should and shouldn't be doing. The first what? one, and I'm going to separate things like BNI, networking groups, where the, the focus and the intention is referral sharing. Okay. So that's what you're supposed to be doing at those things. So you should be passing your business card. You should be talking to people. You should be doing all that. That's the focus. Most other networking um, activities and events are really about relationship building. So what I say is networking is about building relationships with people who may or may not need what you have to sell. So okay. don't go looking to meet everyone in the room hand your business card out to everyone in the room, try and make a sale. None of those things are good. And then you get into that me monster thing that Jack will talk about, <laughs> right? I just love that. So what we do want to be doing is having a plan to meet one or two people and learn something about them. Okay. And, and my favorite is, so tell me your story. Or, you know, totally. so what's your story? Because people will tell you their story and that's right. what lights them up, right? That's okay, what right. they're interested in. So you really get a feel for who they are and what matters to them. And then my last do is, probably not my last do, but I will say, please follow up. If you're going to take the time and energy to get dressed and leave your place of business or your home and go to a networking event and meet people, please follow up with them. Even if it's just a note, hey, so great meeting you, whatever, okay? Don't hand your business card to everyone unless they ask for it. Do get a business card from everyone you meet so that you can do that follow-up. It's, you know, relationships take time. They take energy, mm -hmm. attention. You, you gotta, you know, this is how we build. Uh-oh. So mm -hmm. that that's, you know... I, you want to be someone who other people want to be around, right? You, you want to be someone who other people want to keep in their orbit and no one cares about what you do until they care about you, like till, till they like you and trust you. So mm -hmm. let's stop with the whole. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now you helped us to be able to see it on both sides of the fence. Okay. And so, um, and thank you so much for that. Um, 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 Diane. So Jacqueline? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, first of all, you don't want to be a wallflower, right? And I know that's a very antiquated <laughs> term. 
that my father probably, or my mother told me when I was going off to my first middle school dance is you don't want to stand against the wall and blend in, right? Um, everyone showing up to a network event has the same intentions, right? open mind, desire to meet others uh, and learn from each other. Okay. So keep that in mind that if you are more of an introvert and, you know, you default to wanting to go stand back in, you know, against the wall and observe, that's not why you made the decision to be there. So you need to make a deliberate choice to get yourself and get in the mix. Okay. And, um, in order to get yourself more prepared and more comfortable is a lot of times you may have an idea, whether it's an attendee list of who is going to be at the event, um, you know, from what different companies, what different sectors, whatever the case may be. And we have so many ways to research. So going back to the social media, do your homework, look on LinkedIn, look at their company's Facebook page or Instagram page, their website, understand what's important to them. Do they declare what their mission is of their company? Do they declare who they are and what's important to them and what they're set out to do and what they're passionate about? That way you are prepared to have a conversation with them and say, and reference, I did some research, I wasn't stalking you, but I certainly knew that you were somebody I wanted to meet because I saw that you're passionate about X. <clears throat> Be able to create that connection. So they're like, wow, you really took the time to learn about me before mm -hmm. approaching me. Mm -hmm. And then that will kind of ease the conversation, especially for an introvert, to make it more natural mm -hmm. and have that person that you're looking to talk to more receptive and more open, right? Because everybody thinks somebody else has an agenda. You've got to put your agenda aside and think about them. We all as human beings want to be teachers. We all want to teach somebody else, educate and really be heard. Right. So give others that opportunity and eventually your time will come where you're able to then be heard. Wow. Awesome and real comical too. So I, I kind of like uh, Jack, <laughs> Jack's responses. They're comical, Ooh, but they are also absolutely transparent and true. And so, uh, you know, sometimes like us, like us stated, you know, I've been there before too, just stand off on the side of the wall. We can't do that. We got to jump in there and be ready to go, be energetic and be willing to um, collaborate with others. So we want to talk about the importance of our marketing tools. <clears throat> and this is something that I had to learn some years ago as well. So we're not here to, I guess, um, belittle anyone, but sometimes it's a very bad um, um, protocol to have, to not have your, your information correct, you know, where you're taking a pen, scratching it off and what have you, and then you're writing on the back of the business card or what have you, you have some information that perhaps maybe have changed and you did not take the time to, you know, get everything corrected. That's very important. And as um, uh, Isosa had um, shared early, you know, about our dress code, you know, people come to us according to how we dress, how we look and what have you. And so that's very, very um, important. So we want to talk about some of our marketing uh, um, um, tools that we should be using professionally at these, you know, and some people use like uh, banners and what have you. Some people use the tall banners. Sometimes they use the table banners and what have you to do events. I mean, I think I got one coming up uh, in June, but it's not going to be no banners included. It's going to be too hot for all of that. But, but, um, but it's going to be important for us to know how professional that our marketing tool should be, you know, when we're trying to network with the public and share our brand with others. So we're going to start with um, Isosa to be able to share a little bit about our marketing tools and how important it is to make sure that they are fresh, crisp, and up to date. Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, I just want to say that you are a walking business card. That's number one. So I want to add that to my last uh, contribution. But I want to talk about the importance 
of QR codes. I and mean, we are so wow. we're in this digital age now, right? It's 2022. No lost business cards <clears throat> at the bottom of handbags. Okay. Mm. I know it's so cost efficient to use QR codes. You don't have to print out a lot of business cards. Um, it's uh, it's really, really eco-friendly to use. And also there are QR codes out there that um, when people scan those QR codes, you get their information directly. And so you don't even need to um, spend time exchanging information. Um, I would say get your QR code and make that the background of your phone when you're going to networking events. So you're not standing there and scrolling, looking for the QR code. You can just show someone the background of your phone and they can scan it. And that exchange is um, just so seamless and so easy to use. And yes, no lost business cards at the bottom of handbags. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Diane? I just wrote that down. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I have noticed that QR codes are becoming a lot more popular when they first mm -hmm. came out. No one could really mm -hmm. figure them out. So, um, th so that is so great. Uh, yeah. So, um, yes, I think your information needs to be really accurate. I also think we want to shy away from bringing anything with us. If we're not exhibiting at an event or if we're not presenting, at an event, <clears throat> we're just an attendee. I think we want to err on the side of less is more and at best bring our business cards with us, okay. but not brochures, not flyers, not any of that stuff. Because the truth is, no one wants it. And, you know, and, and <laughs> when I, I'm sorry, but they don't. And when a right. says, you know, business cards at the bottom of handbags, this is what's going to happen with your stuff. Like, Someone's going to take it because they're going to be polite. They're not going to do anything with it. And so it, it's not really, and, and then you're sort of coming across as having an agenda. So just, you know, business card at best. If you're exhibiting, I think, you know, you really want to step it up a bit. Having right. a tablecloth or a runner that's got your logo on it that you can put on that table. Um, having even a tabletop banner or just a document in a lucite frame that says something you know, that draws people toward you. Not a whole lot of stuff on the table because that just sort of confuses people. Um, be very directive about what you want people to walk away with mm -hmm. and let them decide whether they want to take it or not. Th those would be my tips. Okay, okay. Um, Jacqueline? Yeah, so thank you. So I definitely agree with the QR codes. Um, even when you are displaying at um, different events, I always print out and frame the QR code that has a link to my company website that also has a link to me personally. So if somebody wants to reach out to me personally, it actually gets added right to their phone as one of a con as a contact. Um, and so it's very clean, right? Just to have that rather than have a bunch of pamphlets that nobody wants on there. Um, so, so that's definitely a way. I will also say when it comes to those types of marketing events, never sit down. You're not to sit down at your table because that just doesn't <laughs> serve. It looks lazy. Um, it doesn't serve as a way to welcome people to come and invite them to speak to you, learn about you and learn about the, your company as far as why you're there to begin with marketing and displaying um, at an event. I've seen people sitting before and it's like, forget it. I'm moving on to the next <laughs> table. You know, they don't even want to stand up. Forget it. I don't, I, you know, I'm walking around this thing. No, thank you. Um, so, you know, I think that's important. I also think that when it comes to investing in marketing materials, you need to think about who is your audience? Who is your target customer? So in the example of Second Vault, we are a digital vault, okay? Um, and we're more B to B to C. When we initially launched, we were B to C. And we were spending a ton of money on social media marketing. But at the end of the day, that wasn't how we were going to scale. So we did a pivot where we now market to B2B customers. So we have to make sure that our marketing materials are built and convey messages that are relevant to them and um, ensure that that's how we're spending our money. Because everybody today will tell you they're a social media marketing expert, 
that they can bring your growth from X to Z, you know, overnight success, your SEO on your website. And the truth is, is there's a lot of people out there to make a quick buck that are selling themselves in the marketing arena that can't do what they say they can do. I've personally been burned because I've been so eager as a new startup to get the word out there that I have spent money on false hope, mm -hmm. on people that were offering services that they truly couldn't do. And I thought I vetted them well. I did my due diligence, but a lot of people can really trick you. So I think following people's work for a period of time um, before actually committing and signing a contract to work with somebody and outsource them is a best practice that we should all take. We have to be wary around the services being offered to us because everybody now says that they are an expert and a jack of specialty trades and they're truly not. So please, you know, be wary of that. Know who your audience is and be wise around where you spend your marketing budget. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because people do um, sometimes they will trick you and you will you will fall into something. And especially when people are advertising with a with a America's first this or with America's in there, the, they're the America's the last of America. And so yes, you, put it, you have to actually go in there and start the digging. I, I mean, it was something said to me yesterday and it's a lot of fraud that's going on also as well. And I was, I went to the, I'm like, wait a minute. I, I did not transact anything with PayPal and we have to be careful about what we open and all of that stuff too, which they don't have anything to do with networking. But what I'm saying is, um, to what Jacqueline was saying as to people can be fraudulent, <clears throat> people can be, be false advertising, they can be sending mixed messages and what have you, even in networking. So it's, I, you know, it's just best to do your homework and things. At first, I used to get so excited. Oh, you're the first to uh, uh, urban culture this, or you're the first American. This, uh, and then after that, I'm like, no, you're not the first anything. You go to their social media page, you're just an F, you done flunked out. And so I'm, I'm learning how to go in and do research to see actually what this person is doing, what they're thriving, and even with the likes, you can pay for likes. Just because they have likes does not mean that they're authentic. You can pay for likes. I've learned that. And so it's a learning journey, learning process. And as I was sharing with Is Isosa before uh, Jacqueline came on, um, we had a women's lunch and learn in Memphis. And so this lady says, what I'm going to do with this certificate? Uh, you know, I just got this certificate. I'm a coach and no, I haven't gained any um, customers or anything. I said, that's the reason why you're here. You're networking in order to get customers. You have to do something. You can't just sit there, as Jacqueline was saying, you're standing on the wall. You're looking for it to come to you. We have to get up and we have to do something in order to make our brand flourish. And then we have to be in the right classroom. I remember a very high profile, I think it was SunTrust and bank and so i was invited <clears throat> sent an email and i went to the um to the networking event it was someone that did not belong in the event and they did everything in their power to move her out of there too and we have to be careful if no one is sending you any type of, of invites or anything or a professional invitation through the mail don't show up don't show up if someone else invites you your your the, the the your brother sister's dad his mama invite mother invited you i would really need an invitation from that person formally myself before i go into that networking event because once i walk through the door who is you who are you where did you come from do you have a, are you on the list and so these things are very critical and they're very important so um, the next thing we want to talk about is the companies that we network with. Now, when I first started out, that's how I first started out. I'm not in an organization, company, or a movement or anything like that today. Um, I've kind of learned the pivotal ways of how to come in and out. But for those that um, perhaps may be uh, listening, for the ones that are starting out with their business or the ones that want to regrow, revamp, and revisualize their business, we're going to start with Isosa. So what would be some of the uh, some of the companies that you may have dealt with or you may co would consider um, professionals to be able to join in order to make their business more impactful. 
Absolutely. I mean, the big one is BNI. Um, we're at, they're everywhere. So I always tell people get into BNI if you can locally or regionally get in there. Um, also, there are some LinkedIn networking events that are happening in person um, in your in your region and in your city. So take a look at that. Look on LinkedIn for events. I mean, you will find some stuff. Um, also, I think that it's important to look for networking events that have skill building attached to it. So for example, Toastmasters, right? People yep. want to you know, be able to give good speeches and, and, and talk and, and, and vocalize what they're thinking. And so going to Toastmasters, I look at it as a networking event, really, because after um, someone has given a speech and maybe the speech is personal, you can just get right in there and say, you know, hey, I really liked your speech. I, I really identify with your story. So don't think that um, you have to go to something that is like, you know, big and spectacular and like, crazily branded for you to be able to network. Even your local volunteering events, um, your local uh, community events, go to your city hall, um, get get the flyer. Cause I know that in my city hall, there's a flyer of like the local events that are happening um, around me in my neighborhood. And that's that's also a, a good place to um, find people and find customers and, you know, just <coughs> network from there. Okay, uh, Diane. So I, I, I totally agree with all those. I also think um, your local chamber of commerce, right? Um, the National Association of Women Business Owners is a great networking organization mm -hmm. for women owned businesses. Um, but there are other really interesting <clears throat> organizations like the National Small Business Association, which is really um, the oldest nonpartisan lobbying organization in the United States for small business. So there's NFIB, which is I think the, Nas the National uh, Federation of Independent Businesses or something, and then there's NSBA. And so when you join, you know, you're joining an organization that is really focused on helping small business, but you're also engaged with other small business owners from around the country. Uh, so, so local, but also national. The other thing I'm going to say is whatever you're going to join, make sure you participate. You have to go to the <laughs> events, get on a committee, get on the board. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. But so many people like join the chamber and then a year later when it's time to renew, we'll go, well, I didn't get anything out of it. Mm -hmm. Did you go to anything? No. Okay, that's right. No one knows you, right? <laughs> so, yeah, get involved. Absolutely, Jacqueline. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Absolutely. So, one of the most valuable we know mentorship is a great way to network, mm -hmm. right? And the NASDAQ has an entrepreneurial center, it's called the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center. And you apply. And they have a program called Mentor Makers. And um, this program, first of all, that you go through, you're assigned a circle, it's called. And you're part of a small circle cohort of people that are similar to you with similar aspirations, you know, at the si similar stage that you're at. Right. And you meet every month virtually. Um, and expand your network through your circle. Mm -hmm. Past that, they have tons of free events to the people that have gone through the network that give you guidance on so many different aspects of business and entrepreneurship. You then can request a mentor. They have a whole list of people that are mentors. You go through, you look at their profiles, they have a calendar that you can request time with, and some are more popular than others. So you may wait two months to meet with somebody. But these are very seasoned professionals in the entrepreneurial space that are there to support you. And they've taken a direct interest in this and have gotten a lot of funding behind them uh, to be able to offer. So I would definitely recommend that. There's also paid groups that you can become part of. And like you know, others mentioned, be care, you know, be wise as far as where you spend your money and how it aligns with you. Mm -hmm. I'm a member of the crew. I don't know if anybody's heard of that before, but Tiffany Dufu is the fine founder of the crew. 
and I have my own crew now. And we eat, we meet once a month. We're all business owners, entrepreneurs, and we hold each other accountable to what our next goals are. Right. Because we all need <clears throat> accountability. Right. And when you have accountability partners, it helps you achieve your business goals faster. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Jacqueline. Um, it was something that Diane had said. That's the reason why I started the writing, and that was about the Chamber of Commerce. <clears throat> and that is also a very uh, uh, powerful um, 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 organization that uh, business owners and professionals. And then also, too, we want to be be able to help you to understand that it's, it is important that, you know, because I was talking to, uh, speaking with um, a professional here, I don't know, two months ago. <clears throat> and so she was looking for some information and I was sharing it with her. And she says, oh, I can I can go to the Chamber of, of Commerce. I said, you're not ready for that. Not right now, you're not. And uh, <laughs> I did, I mean, I, I didn't want her to go there and fall on her face because there are professionals, people on top level executive individuals that are at the Chamber of Commerce. And what she had, she had just started in about a couple of months or something like that. And so <clears throat> she said, well, I'm a, they said that you can come in every Wednesday for free and be able to, you know, um, uh, tell them who you are and what have you. And I, like I explained to her, I said, your mission is still growing. That's something that we don't talk about. The mission is still turning. It's still growing. It's still perfecting itself. And it may take a while. We're, we're too impatient. And I think that's what her problem was. She was impatient. She was ready to go to top the level seven. <clears throat> and she was still down on the ground on zero, not trying to be little, but I was trying to help her. I did not want her to get out there in front of those professionals. She's she's in Texas. I'm in Tennessee. And I told her, I don't know very, I know very little about Texas, but I told her, I said, if you go to tech, if you in your area and you're trying to network and you don't have your, your mission has not even grown yet. It has it has not even took off the ground yet. You have to let it grow before you can get in front of those professionals because they're going to give you a thumbs down as soon as you sit down. They're going to smile at you. They're going to shake your hand. But at the end of the day, they're going to take your business card and they're going to throw it in the trash because you did not take the time to, you know, we don't want to do the ROI, the return on investments, nor do we want to wait until the sweat equity continues to grow. And so I wasn't trying to belittle her. She was just, oh, I'm going to, to, to the Chamber of Commerce. I'm like, go ahead. It's not good. You, you're calling me for your for my advice and I'm trying to help you. Don't get out there too soon until you're ready to network with other individuals. You want to go to the top. You're not ready for that right now. And so I think that's also very important, making sure that we have all the tools, the resources, the business cards we want to make sure that we're connected you know we have our, our groundwork done and then we can perhaps maybe step out to those other venues that are waiting on us venues are waiting that's what i heard this other gentleman said some years ago people are waiting on us for our brand for our business card for what it is we have to say they are waiting they're looking they're searching but it's important that we have what we have down packed on the inside to make sure that the person receives everything from us so they won't go over here to Jim Bob's table and go and look at, oh, I found a better deal. I need to have all of my stuff done right here first before I before they go and look at Jim Bob. What is it, the strategies that I'm selling or trying to sell, not monetizing, but I'm trying to sell in a network so individuals can be able to stay right there. I, I, I want to be able to have all of my my, my, my ducks in the road so nobody won't have to go to Cindy's table, Jim Bob's table, Betty's table, Annie's table. I want to have it, it used, the buck stops right here. And so that's what we're here to do, to try to help professionals to be able to understand that, okay? And so uh, we want to talk about the Chamber of Commerce. Yes. Go ahead, Can Diane. I, Diane, you know, I think what you said is, is so valuable. And I think what it comes down to is, is we're so hungry, right? As business right. owners, mm -hmm. we're so motivated, but at the end of the day, we need to slow down before we speed up because we will not serve ourselves. Well, we will not serve the customer target that we're trying to reach. Well, if we don't do that and perfecting your 15 or 30 second elevator pitch is 
imperative before you go and put yourself out there. Right. If you're not able to articulate it quickly and the simplest things are the hardest things to put words around, mm -hmm. but we've got to make sure that we are clear, concise, and confident in that de delivery. And just simply slow down before we speed up because our time will come. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because even with, I think she had, uh, she was in Texas and I was, I was orchestrating, articulating a um, event that she was her first, her very first event, helping out and trying to tell her what to do and what have you and and, and what have you. And so my thing was, uh, you have to give back. That's what, we, what, what E. Sosa and I was talking about serving. You have to give them something on your table. You can't just sit there and say, I'm just going to pass out business cards at, at, at a venue where they have this, this, this um, company has uh, invited 160 vendors and this is your first time and you're just going to give them business cards and a pamphlet. They're going to laugh you out of that event. And I did everything in my power from Tennessee, at least I hope that I did, to, to, to help her so she wouldn't be embarrassed. Because I know I, I have been in that situation where I was embarrassed before. And then the, when the people come around, uh, my table is empty and the, it's only 30 people have came to my table um, to get information. That's because I didn't fully prepare. And that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to help her to stop, to stop her from... Uh, reckoning her own event, 160. I said, look at this, this is huge. 160 vendors, this is huge. So you can't just go in there with bubble gum. You're gonna have to put, you're gonna have to go to the Dollar Tree. We have a Dollar Tree here. You have to go to the Dollar Tree and get you some 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 some, some containers that got a lot of lot of incentives in it, a lot of trinkets in it, in order you to in order to satisfy. And then you got to make sure that you know what your mission is before they even pick the pamphlet up. If you can't tell a person what your mission, your goals are, and, and you want them to read it off the paper, you already out the classroom, already. You're already out the classroom. And I had to rehearse it back to her over and over and over. This is your mission. She was concerned about the, this person making t-shirts. I said, no, if someone walks up to your table, you cannot be reading off that pamphlet. You got to have it built down on the inside as to what your business is all about. And you were, you you got me stressed out in Tennessee because I'm I'm afraid that you're gonna make me look crazy because I've been trying to help you. You got you can't read off the pamphlet. You got to know what it is that your business consists of. I'm, I'm, I don't mean to be so harsh, y'all, but I do, I, I be trying to help individuals to understand it. You cannot read off a pamphlet. They gonna your business card is what they're gonna read first. Then they're gonna read what kind of clothes you have on your dress attire. And then if you bring a clipboard to them, oh, this is my mission. This is my goals. They're gonna go right past you, and they're gonna go to somebody else's table that is selling the same thing. Anybody want to compliment? Off, I mean, comment off of that. I don't got steamed up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anybody else want to comment off of that? I okay. Do, I do want to say that. Uh, can I uh, can I comment uh, on that? <laughs> sorry, I just want to say one thing. I first of all, I so agree with you, Diane. It, 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 it's just you know she frustrated themselves, right? I, they have the best of intentions, and then they just yeah. do stuff. So right. the other thing, I, but so the thing I really want to say is when it comes to this elevator pitch thing, I would prefer that we stop calling it a pitch okay. or a commercial because you're not going to sell anything to anybody in 30 seconds, right? right? It is what Jacqueline was saying about get to the point. No, exactly. For me, mm -hmm. it's what is the value that you bring? What is the result that people realize when they work with you? What are you passionate about? You know? who hires you and why kind of thing. It, it, it should be plain English, very, it could be shorter than 30 seconds, frankly, that starts a conversation, that ignites a conversation because otherwise people aren't listening to it. And so, so it doesn't matter what you say. You know, you, you could just recite gibberish for you know, 30 seconds. If, if there's no connection for the other person who's trying to listen to you and learn about you. Absolutely. Jacqueline, I think you were you were going to say something. You're going to piggyback on it. Yeah, it's all about just being relevant, right? And making sure you know who the audience is, anticipate that, be prepared. And again, not be a me monster. 
just ensure that you're adding value. And I do want to say, because we are talking and we have talked about marketing and, and how to get people's attention and stand out if you're in a conference with 160 other vendors. You know, I, I like to always make a connection between, you know, what is my offering? What's at my table? What's unique? And how do I stand out? So in a conference that I did earlier this year, because my company is called Second Vault, I had a big blow up, those money machines that fly money around that you can get in and grab, right? A lot of fake money in there. I had a couple real dollar bills, okay? Um, but it was represented, people were like, well, what is this, right? It represented the chaos of somebody's paperwork flying around their house, flying everywhere in their office. And my company represents the calm an easy way to digitally organize all of those papers that are flying around your head. So I asked people to just please feel free if they're comfortable to enter and stand inside that vault with everything flying around and then come out and tell me how that felt. And all of them were like, that was crazy. That was intense. That was this. And that's exactly where I needed them to be, right? To then be able to relate to what I was trying to offer and what Second Vault's mission is to really put the calm to the chaos. Mm -hmm. So having a linkage, and, and I'll tell you that just having a big, you know, blow up machine with things flying around got attention, you know, as it was, because they were like, well, what is that thing? So try and be unique. Right. Okay, absolutely. Isosa, did you want to take a shot at it? Yeah, um, I, I want to piggyback off of what Diane was talking about in terms of how people uh, need to know their stuff, right? But a lot of the stuff comes from the fact that there's a lack of confidence, a lack of personal confidence. And sometimes in order for you to be confident, you need to have competency. You need to know your stuff. And that only comes with practicing. Mm -hmm. well, confidence is not something that we're, we're born with. It's an acquired skill that we actually practice on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So are you practicing your, your I don't want to say pitch, but are you practicing in the mirror? How often are you talking to yourself about your business and the value that you bring to other people? I can't tell you how many times I stand in the mirror in the bathroom after my shower and I'm like, iconic creative group is, a, it's a, you know, I sit, I talk to myself about what my company is about and the value that I bring and I deliver. So when I go out there and I speak to people, they can understand me um, in a way that is clear and direct. So practice, 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 because the more you practice, the more competent and confident you become. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So with this last question, ladies, um, we know the, the time is far spent and um, we would love for the audience to work, network, follow, grasp you and your brand after the show. That's one unique thing about Women Who Rock With Success Media. We always allow the audience to connect with not not connect with diane but connect with the speakers with the panelists so they can be able to learn because see one person don't know everything as i was explaining to um um was sharing with the sosa one person don't know everything so what did what would it look like if i knew uh, networking i knew how to do build cars i know how to do uh you know things in the in, in the cotton field or in the agriculture and things no 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 that's the purpose of having people to be on the show to be able to help you to further your business, to further your brand. We have had some significant women, and I'm going to share that real quick, and then we're going to uh, move forward by letting the panel um, share uh, their um, social platforms and any books that they have published. But I, I have had some very extraordinary women on this show. We had one woman she was a corporate America a guru, and all of a sudden, you know, she was in a male dominant um, uh, at, um, atmosphere, and they fired her. And now she's in the annual income of seven digits. And that's the type of women that I love. Women know how to get up. And that's the one of her trends is boss in heels. The man may have killed her on that job, but now she's the boss. And so we had another, um, um, I think she was on um, uh, nightly NBC News or something like that. And so they were downsizing. She lost her job. She was a producer. She got cut but she did not stay there. She had to grab 
a brand and run with it. And she's also uh, making, you know, in the six, seven, you know, figure digits and what have you. And so we teach, we want women to know through our experts that you can accomplish, you can achieve and, and what have you. Even though some things in society or, you know, the economic crash or the recession or whatever we're going through, we still can be able to thrive. And so the last um, story I want to share this lady, she come in, came in from work one day. She always played with her 17 year old daughter every day when she come in from work. So one day she came in and she took her foot and she hunched the door. She hunched the, the daughter and the daughter didn't move. And so the daughter Pat was dead. And then after that, her husband divorced her and she wrapped all of that up, wrapped it every piece of it. And now she's also making seven figure digit income. And that's the reason why we are women who rock with success. We achieve, we move, we motivate, we continue to, 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 um, 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 you know, um, continue to further what it is. We had, uh, I think her name is um, um, uh, Miss Kent. I can't think of her first name and what have you. She just got an award from the queen, uh, you know, in London, Queen Elizabeth, an NBA, because she lost her daughter when her daughter was young. Her daughter passed away, but she kept giving, she kept giving, she kept moving, kept achieving, kept walking until she worked her way up in charities and she was honorable with an MBA from Queen Elizabeth. Those are the type of women that we like to uh, focus. We like to profile them and spotlight them so they can be able to, uh, so the audience can know that yes, you can. Yes, we can. Yes, they can. Okay, so we're gonna start with Isosa. I didn't mean to get off into all of that, but I just wanted to share that um, continually with the audience. We bring that up sometime, but I just wanted to share that with the audience. Um, Isosa, we want you to share um, how the audience can connect with you. And also, any bu books that you have published, any upcoming master classes that you may have where you're training women or men and what have you, and how they can be able to follow you on your websites and your social media platforms. Absolutely. So I recently just released the seven days of confidence challenge, and it's a guide to empower entrepreneurs to jumpstart their confidence journey. It is completely free and it's on my website. You can download it at esosaak.com. Um, you can also book my company's creative services if you're a purpose-driven business or organization, or if you just need branding strategy or custom marketing materials, and that is at iconiccreative.com. And please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, at Iconic Creative, and you can follow me personally on Instagram at hey underscore SOS, hey SOS. Thank you. Okay. Um, Diane? Thank you so much, Diane. This was um, really a lot of fun. So the best place I would say to find me and all the stuff I have going on is my website, hellbigenterprises.com. It's easy. You can look around, see all the stuff. I have a podcast, Accelerate Your Business Growth, where I interview experts on their area of expertise that has to do with business. Uh, so, uh, and it plays wherever people, you know, get their podcasts. Uh, I have a book, Succeed Without Selling, The More You Think About Selling, The Less You Will Sell, uh, that is available everywhere books are sold. And there's a whole chapter on networking in that book. So, Okay, great. Jacqueline? Absolutely. So, you know, I just want to echo your, your sentiments, Diane, about your previous, um, previous you know, guest on, on this. So we can do anything as women, okay? My company was born out of a personal need. I almost died when I delivered my second child. I suffered a post-delivery hemorrhage, which is quite common, but we don't talk about it often, right? Childbirth, they think we just pop these babies out and it's like this easy thing, but it is a massive undertaking for our bodies as women. And I had a hemorrhage and I flirted with death. Um, and as a result of that, second vault was, was found. Because had I not made it out, my husband and my children's lives would have been so disrupted because I did not have everything important to our lives organized in a systematic way that would have been easy to find. And I would have sunk the people that I love most beyond my physical presence being gone. 
And I don't want that for anyone. And so I overcame that. And I believe, you know, resilience is, and persistence and not giving up is so important because I'm passionate about other people not putting their families and those they love most in the situation that I almost did. So you can find me, our website, secondvault.com. You can find me on LinkedIn. And I would definitely urge people finding me on LinkedIn is Jacqueline Strauss. Look at my profile. Look at all the experiences, professional experience that I've had. And if I align with what interests you, reach out to me and I'd love to connect. Also, Facebook, Instagram, Second Vault. You can find us there as well. Twitter as well. Um, but I, you know, I definitely urge, remember what we talked about is reach out if there's a purpose, if you believe that there's alignment, right? For us to be able to connect and have some sort of commonality um, where we can help each other. Uh, and I'd, I'd love to hear from anybody on that and you know, continuing to share the story and, and being there for each other and empowering each other as women. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for sharing that story. See, I love stories. I do. I, I love storytelling because, uh, you know, we, we just we just weren't born with a golden spoon in our mouth. We start from the bottom and we work ourselves up. So, ladies, thank you so much for taking your time out to be with us on today, hanging out with us, sharing with the business owners and professionals as to the importance of networking. Sometimes we jump from E and we're supposed to be at A. So you have to network first. First. You have to get the groundwork in there first before, um, you know, you, you, you're thinking that you're going to, you, you know, see results overnight. No, you have to network. You have to talk to people. You have to communicate. You have to collaborate. Then you have to, you know, be able to express your brand. And that's through the attire. And that's also through marketing uh, tools. People look at all of these things. If you misspell things, I'm serious. I've been there before. If you misspell words and what have you, they won't even pay you any attention because they think you're illiterate because you don't take the time. We have to take the time in order to polish up these um, tools and resources in order for our brand to be effective. So once again, thank you so much, uh, audience. You know where to go, facebook.com, Women Who Rock With Success Media. And so thank you for once again, everybody, for being our guest on the day. And hopefully uh, we can be able to collaborate on something else for 2023 for networking, okay? Thank you so much.